and action. And welcome everybody. This is BNP Weekly episode 190. We are 10 episodes away from a big, big, big numbers again. Um, what's going to happen into 100? What's good? What's, uh, what's I don't know. So one thing, uh, one thing that I that I know that apparently we outsourced uh, the hosting. Oh, that's true. To Seb. We did. So with that, it's literally out of our hands. So I have that no true. idea what's. I bet that he doesn't even recall that that he's supposed to do anything, and we're just ten episodes away. So perhaps we need to reach out to him. <laughs> anyway, uh, episode one ninety, uh, PMP Weekly. We talk about the latest Microsoft three sixty five. We always have a visitor in place uh, as well. Always, I guess, always is the right way of saying that. And then we go through the uh, latest articles from Microsoft and community. My name is Sasha Yuvan. I'm a product manager. Always need to think through what is my title uh, in Who Microsoft 365 platform. <laughs> which hat do I actually take today? <laughs> so, hello, uh, I'm the handyman. Now, um, really well describes my role at least. Um, and with me as a co-host is. <laughs> Good day, everybody. My name is Valdek Mastegas, and I am cloud developer advocate for Microsoft 365 at Microsoft. Excellent. And today we had a visitor uh, who's Addis Hugo. Addis is a well-known MVP, uh, regional director, architect, a lot of experience from the SharePoint, Microsoft 365, Craft, Azure, and many, many other things as well. And among other things, what he does, he organizes the European Collaboration Summit. We'll talk about that one a bit. Um, that's an event which is happening in spring 2022. Was it May? It's May. May 2022. Yes, it is. May? It may have been May. It may have been made. <laughs> so we'll get the notes and, of course, the, the dates and everything in the in the notes as well. But let's actually jump on that interview right away. Right, Valdek? Excellent. Welcome, Anis. Uh, Anis, you got joining us on the BMP uh, weekly episode. I'm looking the the title of episode 190. So we are 10 episodes away from the 200 uh, breaking zone. Mm. Still a big, big, big uh, honor to have you actually on the show as well. Addis, you've been on the show in the past, but can I do a quick recap? Who are you and what do you do for a living? Thank you, Vesku. Thank you, Valdek. Uh, so my name is Addis Hugo. I'm a Microsoft uh, MVP, actually two categories, of Microsoft 365 and Azure. And um, uh, living in Germany, having a company of my own running. On one side, different things uh, about uh, which are connected to the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, and another side, uh, doing a product company, which we'll probably mention some point of time in this call. Uh, as a day job, or as two day jobs, uh, a friend of mine told me in Branson actually the other day, Are you also driving Uber? So, uh, <laughs> some as say. A, <laughs> <laughs> and as a night job, together with some other awesome and splendid people, we are running. Uh, large community initiated conferences one Microsoft 365 uh, focus which is european collaboration summit which is again going to be in germany in Düsseldorf this year and uh, next one uh, and the other one is a uh, european cloud summit focused more on the blue side of major, uh, microsoft universum uh, being azure and everything around the azure and the uh, cloud so um yeah there are things to do that's that's actually a nice way of actually putting them. What is what is then the Microsoft 365 side if the Azure side is blue side and then the what so is the color were, of Microsoft 365? Now, I'm now, just thinking this is a great <laughs> question. This is really a great question. So, it's also blue. There was it's no blue there was no there was no color uh, for Microsoft 365. I think there still isn't official one. Yep. So if you remember one of the first collab summit days uh, collab uh, collab summits in Zagreb in Croatia back then. Uh, we were presented uh, with a keynote room, had the lighting, LED lighting behind uh, behind the pro projector yeah. wall. So uh, I was playing with that lightning, and I was like, eh, this color could be nice. And I made a, this was a day before the, or week before conference, and so I made a photo of, of, of the wall with the lightning. So I was like, this is really a cool color. So I just took the hex code of that color, which just yeah. produced the other, Put it on the web, uh, website, and since, uh, since then, this famous collab summit magenta. Yep. You, you all Is know the, the color, color you, have, of. you have on your shirt? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, this, the logo. This yeah. color I got on yep. my shirt. So the famous yep. collab summit magenta, this is how it be, became to be. It was a pure coincidence taken out of a photo that I made of our <laughs> keynote stage in Zagreb. <laughs> yeah. That's how things happen. It's not a coincidence, but it's creative power. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. and, or it's it's a destiny. It's it's one of those things where we just some things just happen, right? Uh, creative minds, creative whatever destiny is just touring us forward. Okay, now, 
related on that one, actually, that was mm -hmm. in Zagreb. Let's let's do a quick recap. You, we will celebrate 10 years of European Collaboration Summit within next spring. That was on what day? Quickly saying. When when is ECS happening? Uh, this year is it's becoming on twenty second next, next year. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm it's still already March, COVID, right? I'm still in the COVID standard time. I'm sorry. I, I'm, <laughs> yes, really, I'm still yes. doing the COVID standard. Time. So the next year it's going to be in May in uh, beautiful Düsseldorf uh, in Germany uh, between 22nd to 24th of May. Where 22nd are going to be uh, pre 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 day tutorials. <coughs> one of them being PNP development tutorial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the other great eight tutorials, you can find them on, on our website. And um, right, Düsseldorf, one of yep. the largest German cities, beautiful yep. city, uh, easy to access from all over Europe or from the United States because it's the third largest airport in Germany after Frankfurt and Munich, obviously being the two largest one. So it's uh, convenient for us. It's yeah. uh, large enough. We are doing it actually in the Düsseldorf Trade Fair uh, building, which gives us a lot of possibilities and uh, basically we can, uh, we can put out uh, our venue as, as a puzzle piece what we need uh, what, we, what we need what we don't need and the people working there in uh, at the venue are actually the best ones we have met until now so I, I'm, I'm happy with them cool cool and now now coming back on the 10 years so now it's 10 years uh how did that happen what what, what are the you started from croatia right can we talk about we the did. journey a bit on on we what, did. what, what happened was the, what was do you recall the first moment you feel like Let's organize an event. I, I I can recall it very well. Cool. It was a Wednesday. You know, is you this know a where, family safe you know story? Where, you know where all the best uh, <laughs> ideas uh, start, Baldic, right? In yes. Yes. With, with some alcohol involvement. A beverage. A beverage. A beverage. The, yes. We are not cutting this out, right? Or are we cutting no, no. this out? <laughs> we are not cutting this out. We will see afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, Depends where it goes. So there is Lena <laughs> Trykovsky, my one of my best <laughs> friends in life, and uh, Microsoft Project MVP back in the time. Now they're all Microsoft 365 MVPs. Yep. There are no, there are no those divisions. Uh, Tony Trankola, uh, whom you both uh, know very well, the, the the brain behind Syskit, and myself sitting in a pub, looking at the beautiful Adriatic coast. Uh, at another conference, the, back in time, Microsoft had those local conferences. So th those yep. uh, don't happen anymore as well. We're looking at the beautiful uh, coast, and then I'm saying, God, we could do a SharePoint and Project Conference. And Tony and me look at him like, we could. And that was basically it. That, that happened in, uh, in uh, spring, early spring 2012. Yep. And the first Collab Summit has happened exactly 10 years ago, or 10, 10 years and 15 days ago. Uh, in November, November 2012, we have obviously skipped the COVID years. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now we are in the 10th edition in 23 because we, we are missing a year. Right. Yep. Right. We are missing a year there. So this is this is how it happened. It was it was actually I mean, we were all keen on doing it. But the first words, uh, let's do the conference have been spoken by Nena Trykovsky. Cool. How did so? How did uh, how did evolve over the years? Right? Because like you mentioned, it was a local oh event then then an event more regional one in the the adriatics and yeah, now mm -hmm. it's a european it's or, it's a a phrase established yeah. phrase people know throughout the world you yeah. get speakers yeah. from worldwide before we go to the how it explodes can can you explain like to track like three tips for anybody who's setting up a small conference how do you any 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 tips related on the journey and then we can talk about the historical expansion what 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 is needed to grow a small well first of all set up a conference any tips on that and what about then growing that to be a worldwide phenomenon so believe or not and you do realize i'm a developer i yep. like coding i'm i'm again coding quite some and i'm i'm loving it uh doing that. some of us are still allowed to write code so it's good right <laughs> <laughs> um even if our developers are not particularly happy when i write code but they are not allowed to say otherwise. So you accept the ours, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, the um, what you really need is the awareness, which means marketing. I know in the beginning you've not got, uh, you haven't got a crazy budget and everything, and, and it's all not easy. But you actually do need to think about creating marketing. How do you get to people? Yeah. And uh, 
And it also needs to be that the stars need to align. I mean, when we started, it, those were the heydays of SharePoint. Everybody wanted SharePoint. It really was. And the people were happy to be somewhere where we were talking about SharePoint. Yep. And yes, we had YouTube back in 2012. We had other things back in 2000, but it was not nearly as much spread out as, as it's now 10 years uh, later. I mean, you, yep. can, you can find everything on YouTube nowadays. Back then, you basically wouldn't. So it was a cool thing to see, I don't know, Valdek or Vesa or Sahil was coming or all those legends of SharePoint of the time, uh, Eric Schaub, Spence, you know what I mean, coming uh, to talk to people. And their people will be actually uh, able to ask the questions. A few yeah. years forward, I will always remember, I was back in Skybo back then, and one of our developers came to me. She was completely pale in her face. I cannot believe I did. I really talked to Vesa Yuvonen. No, 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 no. The first, the first one, like, I, I have some questions about some uh, PNP stuff. And I was like, hey, Vesku. So Vesa was there like within a few minutes. It was on the evening party. And she's coming to me later. I, I cannot believe I was really talking to Vesa Yuvonen. And I was like, well, this is why we are doing this. Yes. This is yes. why nothing can really replace in-person conferences and talking over, I don't see a lie over a beer. Yep. And this is why we are doing it. Yep. So Absolutely. You mentioned the in-person aspect. Mm -hmm. March 2002, and COVID happens. Yep. How, what did that mean for the events, but also the um, community you run? Because on one side, there is the event aspect of it, but I think it's more than that. You've actually, for the last 10 years, ran a community. And, I, and I'd like to go into to that side a bit more, like what does it mean to build and grow community over that many years? But first things first, yep. March 2020, how did that impact everything you do and the connections you help people build? So there are two, aspect, uh, two aspects on uh, answer on this uh, question. One is really, uh, the financial one, which you cannot avoid, because when you when your events grow over two thousand people, and for we are going to talk about twenty twenty one later. Twenty twenty one, we had two thousand five hundred tickets, so it was a huge number. You you cannot run a free event, but you need uh, because you need a big venue, you need catering and everything. So what we are trying is to keep the price minimal to cover our, our costs, but to make it accessible really for everyone. Uh, Inclusion. Uh, so, answering your question, it was immediately because German government was doing things which were funny and they were prolonging the state of pandemic only for the, for three weeks. So, we basically could not cancel an event, and right. we had contracts valued over over four hundred thousand euros in that point of time, which I would need yeah. to pay from our, my own pocket if things would go completely wrong. Yeah, things went. A little bit wrong, but we were not really uh, we were not really damaged by four hundred thousand. But that was a real danger at that point of time. So there's a fear on that side. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need to say our sponsors and our attendees, and this is the community part that you are talking of, uh, Valdek. They were all like, "Yep, we understand. We will postpone as long as needed." So not wow. as, okay. One sponsor, one sponsor <laughs> is that, but um, they uh, luckily never applied to be sponsors again. But from our 75 sponsors, 74 said, yep, we are fine. Wow. Keep, keep That's our really money. Cool. Keep our yeah. money. Uh, we will do the event whenever we can. And we could eventually in 2021 later. And that's about, that's now as a trans transitioning value to that part about community. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible. People are there. People waited again just to be there. Uh, now I'm switching back to the 2021. When Germany lifted the barriers, the COVID, uh, COVID measures, in September, I think we had within one month we had one thousand two hundred sold tickets. Wow! I mean, if there is a sign of a product market fit, yes. that is one. Yes, exactly. This was. This was. I mean, we were looking. We were just looking at, uh, at this, this in uh, in twenty twenty one. In um, we could not believe what's going on. Unfortunately, yep. a lot of those uh, those people did not come on the end because <clears throat> the Delta wave and Omicron happening yep. only two months later, but it's a completely different story. Um, but that's what that community uh, means. And community did miss in-person events. 
We were all trying to help during COVID. I mean, we organized the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Vesku, you remember very well, yep. well that one. There were other efforts uh, by other people. A lot of SharePoint and call up days uh, went, uh, SharePoint Saturdays call up days went online uh, in that part. So suddenly all the local events became global because uh, yep, everybody yeah. was doing it globally because teams yep. are global. <laughs> you cannot prevent somebody from joining on teams. Um, people needed this interaction. But we, what we also learned that the online events were not the thing. Yep. We have seen how the numbers were decreasing rapidly on the online events during the pandemic. Yep. Because it was kind of cool for a few months. And then everybody... Uh, the novelty yeah. aspect of it, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Now, coming on to the in-person, I, so mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of visiting, being a kind of a guest in the Power Platform Conference in September, uh, which was mm -hmm. awesome in Orlando, uh, really well organized and helped by Heather Newman's team, David Warner, mm -hmm. Hugo, doing coordinations, mm -hmm. and and then uh, having Lamana, Charles Lamana as a mm -hmm. keynote, and Jeff was there, and I was helping in a one section of Jeff's keynote. And that was already like, oh my God, this is so cool that in-person feeling and meeting a lot of friends because a lot of power, power platform people are coming also from a SharePoint background and yes. then evolving to the business, uh, business dynamics and, and power platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a joint historical path in many of the things. That's now, true. last week or this week was the European uh, SharePoint mm -hmm. conference, SharePoint Yes, European mm -hmm. SharePoint, European Azure Office. SharePoint Office 5 and Azure, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, but that was done, that, that in person aspect is so wonderful. Um, yes. And being among, in this case, because I'm from the Microsoft 365 side, and a lot of the visitors and speakers are like friends, they're family. They're like having that opportunity to see to be all of the people worldwide. It's just mind bubbling with the, on the feeling. Which is an interesting point, Adi. So from perspective of, of you organizing events over such a long period of time, 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. How do you see the purpose of, a, of events evolving? We, because as you said, like in the past, well, we would, you know, uh, buy books. It was still the time where Microsoft yep. would send us once a month the big volumes of CDs, DVDs to <laughs> install MSDN, stuff. MSDN, right? MSDN yep. totally, and DACnet, right? How how do you see, if at all, the purpose, the real goal of events evolving over time? And what role do they play now? They do play the same role because, I mean, if I can just talk about uh, collapse, I mean, for the past yep. 10 years, we never had a decrease in the audience. Never. Yep. For all 10 years. Because And sometimes I'm a bit afraid of that. Uh, how much can it actually grow? I mean, it cannot grow indefinitely. It, it's not possible. Not, nothing can grow indefinitely. So there's a purpose. But I would say that the learning aspect of that is still there but maybe not to the degree that you would go to the level 400 sessions to ask somebody why do you write this uh, line of code like this and not, not like that yeah it's more like of a vision it's more like what can be done because in the plethora of the opportunities which you have got now let's only speak about March 365 let's not mm -hmm. even touch touch Azure or Dynamics yep. or yep whatever i mean i know that for myself it's hard to keep up yeah what, what's all new i mean uh just for us just for a short uh short anecdote so that well, three weeks ago we needed to implement a feature in run events and i was turning out to uh, my uh regional directors uh, distribution list hey does anybody have an idea how we could do this and then one of the other regional directors said but don't you know for two days now so they published that on 16th of november you can make REST calls from stored procedures in SQL Server. You didn't know? What? <laughs> you can make REST calls from SQL Server stored procedures. Interesting. Wow. I like, How great is this, actually? It solved our problem. It completely solved our problem because we wanted to transition part of the application to wow. the Azure Logic Apps. Yeah, yeah, but that's interesting. Yep. How, do you, how do you trigger Logic App? With the you, Azure Function, you see, yep. You, you yep. send a pigeon. Yep. yep. Yeah. No. HTTP, it's HTTP. a rest endpoint. Yeah, yeah. HTTP. So uh, I was like, you cannot keep up with all of that. You both yep. guy worse in Microsoft. Of course, you didn't know about that because why would you? Yep. But there, there are so many things. No, we we updated the docs, so everybody just knows, <laughs> right? Right. So. <laughs> and I have seen and I have seen your article on docs on SP Metal being updated like two months ago. Why really? would anybody update the docs article on SP Metal? 
<laughs> we don't do this anymore. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> No. But but uh, that's actually so, so so I have to say that that's one mm -hmm. of the learnings what we've been telling nowadays at least personally mm -hmm. on the on the presenters is not to focus on deep diving, it's focus on spark an idea that kind of having that oh oh I need to write that one down I'll I'll have a and closer look on that after the conference right so think of the think of this how many of you would think when developing an app think okay there's an administrative workflow in the background somebody needs to approve something or disapprove something yep. or whatever how many of you how many developers would come to the to the point and say okay let's have an email as a primary interface to this and let's use the logic apps yep. to do the magic in the background and to put things in the back in the database or wherever they belong we have an email as a primary user interface of it why People use emails. That's true. Everybody knows yeah. email. Yeah. So those are the ideas that we want to spark. I mean, uh, those are one of the sessions basically on the cloud summit, which we had the last yeah. year. Or we have a whole new thing called metaverse, which everybody thinks, I'm afraid of this. I need to look like an avatar. Yep. It's actually really, really useful in the industry. I mean, you need to get those ideas from somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thinking about, so you mentioned, right, next year you're going to celebrate the 10 years of the <laughs> events you run. 10 years. What do you have for us in store? Can you lift a little bit of kimono, yeah. like open up a little, like share a few, you know, like this is why you don't want to miss. It's going to be a boring event that nobody is there. <laughs> Perfect. Are yes. at. Yes. That's what I love. Like. We will have just boring speakers. Predictable, present. boring. Right. We will have boring speakers <laughs> doing boring talks on a boring, uh, boring stages, and not there will be no fun whatsoever happening between the sessions. No jumping from the stage. No jumping from the stage. <laughs> or podium, and, whatever. Uh, no, so. we are we are definitely <laughs> we, are, we are going to uh, put way more. Um, Way more thing on the fun part, on the fun, uh, fun uh, facts. We are going to uh, broaden up the party in the evening, and uh, that that will be ah, there. There will be things. I mean, you might see some elements which we had before. <coughs> Bend on the boat, <coughs> being present during the old conference and uh, the whole conference and everything. So uh, let's say we are going to properly celebrate ten years, but properly. For a reason, that what you said made me think. I don't know if you know the movie A Night at the Roxbury. No, sorry. Okay, so there was the, that is a movie about guys who had an idea to make the because like they could never go get into a dance club, so they wanted to have a cl club to look inside, like the outside. Okay. And what you said made me think like, so we will have the conference and then party. Like, what if we have party throughout the day and a conference in the evening? <laughs> no. What, what, what if Let's we don't do something separate, else. What if we don't separate those two at all? True. Exactly. That's a fair point as huh. well. Huh? Yeah, that's good. Now, the brain power you have in this call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, I, I wanted to give you the opportunity also to call out to other people. Uh, you're not the only person uh, organizing the European uh, Collaboration Summit and the, the journey from the Croatia, Croatia, Germany and everything else. Can I talk about who, who's actually behind of the scenes? Uh, um, the I don't, I need, first I need to uh, mention two people who are not directly involved anymore day to day, but who are grandfathers of this event, is Tony Franco and Renat Rajkowski, I already uh, mentioned them. People who were uh, with us along the way for a certain period of time, like Matthias Einig from Rencor. Uh, yep. who did who did a great and important part. Right now, uh, because with this number of people, it cannot be two, three people anymore. It's just not possible. Yep. Uh, so right now, uh, on the content side, we've got uh, Spence Harbor, a legend, Mustafa Toroman, Azure legend. Uh, on the management side, uh, there's basically uh, three people uh, doing uh, the, those things, like basically Spence, myself, and Margit. On the administration part, it's uh, uh, mainly HR, finance, and everything is market, and everything about the sponsors and uh, talking to people and reaching out is a person without whom we could never run this conference. Is Elena? I mean, she's she's basically uh, a magic power that almost nobody sees, but which is everywhere. And uh, she's she's former. Uh, she used to work for Microsoft before. She was organizing Microsoft Network Conference in Bosnia for many years. And after that was not a thing anymore, after Microsoft pulled out uh, from the local events, uh, we were like, ah. And that's, uh, that's when we asked her if she could uh, 
she could somehow imagine herself working with us and uh, luckily luckily uh, we got a yes as an answer there so this is this is uh, what's going on so what i'm personally doing is i'm mostly uh, in charge in operations to make everything actually run uh, day to day and uh, i still run marketing because it's thing that nobody wants to do and uh, Marketing, it, design, everything is me. Well, like you said, that's the most important thing in the in the events it and actually, conferences. Marketing, is. communication, communication, it communication. Actually, yeah. It actually so. is, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it, it has a reason. I mean, you're doing really cool work, and why not tell everybody? Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's what we need to do. That's, uh, communicate, that's what communicate, we... communicate. No. communicate. So, a, a, a part of your, your, your work, um, you've built a thing. You have this thing called run events. Can you talk about, about a, a bit about like how like what it is, what it's for, what role, role it plays, and what else do you do with that? Uh, yep. Right. Uh, Are there events before... for folks who run, or what is it? <laughs> well, except they, people uh, who run in events. Um, so there's uh, among the people who organize events, uh, they are also going. Let's run an event. You are running that event. The events that are being run. So we are basically looking for uh, we are looking for the platform for our own conference, and we are doing many different. Things. We are trying many different things. We were like uh, trying a platform of different tools, trying to work together like uh, Eventbrite, like Session Night, like everything, which were good Excel for sheets. they were do, which were which were, which were good for the things that we were doing, but they were not working together. And you know how often we were copying data between A and B, and then we would get VOVA for the uh, for the mobile app, and it would be a third place that we need to copy the data. And let's just talk about security issues there and uh, GDPR and everything. Not fun. Uh, we Accounts tried off. Yeah, we we we, we tried uh, many different, um, uh, not many, three different tools for overall conference management. They were all basically. Server client base, uh, some were discussed as a, as a, as a SaaS, which they were not. Uh, they were like, okay, this is not working. So in the COVID times, we had some of the time. Uh, the, 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 the only work I had was my 365 work. Uh, and I was like, hmm, you know what? Let's let's do this uh, right. So we are building a software and service platform based on Azure. What else? Uh, Basically, for everyone to set up an event and to run an event in three clicks. What you get is ticket sales, uh, what you get is sponsor management, and what you get is speaker management. We will be expanding that what to many need. other things. Yeah, we will be expanding. We, we've got plans. But this is basically bread and butter, which we want to launch now in January. When I say launch in January, we, are, we have it working for a year now. But basically, we are using the Francis guinea pigs. Which we are stopping, which we are stopping to do in general, and to actually go really to market. We've got a really good mobile app, uh, which I'm very, uh, very proud of. Uh, well, that mobile app is probably the only thing that has not been done on Microsoft Technologies there, because uh, we can have a be talking about Maui later. But uh, let's say we just <laughs> we decided we decided for Flutter uh, on that one. I prefer um, Lanai and Maui. Uh, I love Hawaii. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have and that's a you know WAP, so perhaps you can help us build, oh, yeah, build up with that. Oh yeah, WAP, WAP. <laughs> and, uh, so basically, uh, because one of the issues, especially during the COVID, all those people wanted like twenty thousand a year for events that were not happening, or even more. Twenty thousand was cheap. I was like, okay, let's stop this. Let's give this to people to use for free until they, they don't start, uh, start uh, selling tickets. When they start selling tickets. We want our fee, which is in the level of the Eventbrite fee. So we are not going to be more expensive in an Eventbrite. But Eventbrite selling tickets, we are, we are giving you basically everything else. The promise which we made uh, is basically it's always going to be free for free events. So Vesco, you are organizing a birthday for your son, for example, and you want to put some things and you want to send an invitation. So you, you need, for example, to know how many people are coming so you can organize catering and everything. Yeah, guess speakers, who's actually having clowns. birthdays? Yeah, guess who's having a birthday today? So there we go. Yeah, so, you see. So it's basically it's going to be it's going to take you <laughs> 10 clicks to set up a birthday event for your son. Yep. So that people that people can still apply. time, Ressa. There is still, still <laughs> yes. time. You can still do it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and it will, yeah, and it will it will always be free for the free events, uh, for the yeah. personal events. It's also always going to be free for the community events, even if they take some small money. For example, 
friend of all three of us, Edin Kapic in Barcelona, took a really some small fee, like five euros or 10 euros, I don't, I don't remember now for the tickets, not to make money on that, but basically to uh, just to, to prevent the no-shows, to have people actually come. Because yeah. for 10 euros, you are actually going to make an effort yeah. and come. But also, I mean, we, uh, we would give it for free for the charity events. Let's say the Red Cross is doing I don't know, something in support of Fundraiser Ukraine. Or something, some, yeah, yeah, something for support in Ukraine. Of course, we would not take money. For, uh, we would not yeah. uh, be taking that percentage for them. It will be free for them. So our promise is free, free for community, free for charity. And we want to take our cut from the from the uh, from the <laughs> I'm sorry from the professional events. I mean, uh, yep. Yep. and we can. Have, it's funny. I mean, how the traction uh, is taking part. We have the first professional event actually starting, which are paying us money. Okay, uh, I mean, we're also a professional event, but we, we're not paying money to ourselves. So it's yep. it's, it's be kind of stupid. You move it from uh, one to another. It's funny money. <laughs> our 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 dear friends, our dear friends from Dynamic Minds. Uh, it's also a Microsoft community focused conference uh, about dynamics. Uh, in previous years, as much as I know, they were in Netherlands. Now they're in Slovenia, in beautiful Slovenia. Uh, so Dynamics Minds is using uh, Run Events uh, as their platform, and uh, they seem to be happy. We had advanced technology uh, days in Zagreb the last week. We were also very happy about the platform and everything that they were doing. So we have now, even without doing any sales. We have people asking us, uh, yes, we know it's not ready, but we love what you are doing, so can we use it? So it's it's a fun attraction. Yeah, perfect. And it's attraction well, which gives the us base gives ads us the... you can get, right? That's the best ad you can get, it's like actually, the word of actually, mouth. Actually, yeah, yeah. Yes. It actually, it actually is. So, uh, yes, yeah, so what we are doing now, we are ramping up all the collab days events uh, with uh, run events, and we are growing with them. Uh, we saw, uh, for example, we saw what was not really working well in Bletchley and in uh, Barcelona. So we did much better in Lisbon. Uh, with some stuff, and I basically want by spring next time by the Poland to the the that everything is fully featured and fully fledged and uh, everything what we need for the uh, collab days in Poland. Now that's a great donkey bridge segue uh, on the collab days. What what are these yes. collab days? Can you talk about what are they? How how are they conformed? What what's the as I, idea? As I told you, all the best ideas always start in a pub. I mean, this is why COVID was not good. This is why my COVID was not <laughs> No ideas. We had no, ideas. not in, no in ideas. person. Yes, because during the COVID, there's no in so, person. So, Valdek, yeah. you, will know, you will know that famous hotel in Vianen, right? Yes. Uh, so, in that hotel in Vianen, few of us were sitting, Martin, um, Thomas, Elio, Spence, myself, uh, Katya, Katya Yokisalo, um, Paul Hunt, Few people uh, sitting there. I said, "Okay, SharePoint Saturdays are not things anymore because things are changing. What do we do?" And we basically came up. Uh, they came up uh, with a network of events called uh, Collab Days. But this is basically also uh, Rodrigo was also there. Rodrigo Pinto from from Portugal. Yep. So this is basically they are also basically still in the board from United States. We've got Eric Schaps. Oh, is, was it a cat? Yes, yes, it, it, is. it is yes. my cat. Yes, he <laughs> scratched at the door just to be let in to be able to sit here I, and listen. Maybe my, uh, someone uh, would, would jump on the lap to feature on the camera. My are even too lazy to walk. Uh, but, <laughs> so so uh, they, they are basically also the the, uh, the board of that. Yep. Spence and me are just observing members of the board. We are not. We are actually not deciding there. I think it's mainly run at the moment by uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas acting as a, a person in the background. So we, uh, they are putting way less restrictions uh, restrictions on the uh, on the events like SharePoint Saturday. SharePoint Saturday had to be on Saturday, uh, and this, this is like there are way less restrictions. The only basically you, it needs to be about uh, collaboration and Microsoft, if possible, with Microsoft 365 and Power Platform and Azure and uh, other Microsoft technologies, uh, and they should be called collab days. And that's basically it. And I mean, don't do stupid things. I mean, uh, be in the community behavior, be uh, in the community mindset, 
And people are really people are really observing that. So we've got the events in Finland, we've got events in Portugal, we we are going to get an event in Croatia now, we have got uh, events in Belgium, Netherlands, you know, in Barcelona. One, New, England, New England one, Boston. Right, there. I want just to go to States. And now uh, it's uh, all spreading to the United States. So Mark and Julie started the New England event, uh, Christian Buckley started the Utah event um, for call-up days. So it's it's getting really traction. Really cool. We as a collab summit are trying to provide the infrastructure and uh, sponsor contacts because we all know how sponsor contacts are uh, uh, important. And uh, now we as run events are going to obviously to, to support that all with one platform for uh, for them to be shared. And the whole collab days uh, website is going to move to, uh, from WordPress to run events to basically be all yeah, basically five clicks and you've got your event, you've got the whole the, the whole back end to run it, and you've got a front end uh, to have a website and to be listed on the main uh, main call updates. And website. no and waste time free. on updates and all that, right? No waste times on updates and everything. We are still and that's a free thing? Hmm? Yeah. Is that a free for the organizers or yes, how does it work? completely free. For the moment, because we are still not yet with the event publishing, they need to give me a short call. Uh, beginning in January, they will be able to do next next finish. Cool. Like That's like cool. back in the times when we were installing SharePoint, right? Next next finish. Yeah. Yeah. Working on it will not take no, long. No, but, no, but, <laughs> no, but, no, but. <laughs> you should just add it just for a delay in UI. It doesn't really do anything. Everything, but just for giggles of it. <laughs> so working on one it. one of the one of the things we have a sponsor raffle driving built uh, drawing bit, uh, built in the run events. So basically, everybody who has uh, each event sponsors can delete on the booths. They can draw either among their uh, their booth visitors, among all the all the attendees, yep. and basically click draw and there was immediately the name. And like, too fast, like no, that, that cannot be true. <laughs> yeah, that cannot be true. That reminds Sorry. me of yeah, that, that reminds me of stories somebody built. <clears throat> I don't know what it was. I think it was something based on like get a random record from two million records stored in SQL or in Azure storage. Mm -hmm. And it was like too fast. Like people didn't believe like that's not connected to API. No way. So they had to build <laughs> in a delay just to yeah. give that human feeling. The app is doing something really smart now yep. to get you the data. I was like, and the data was there. And it was just like they, they, it, it's too fast. It cannot be a real thing. Valdek, the best best uh, friend of every developer is thread.sleep. Yes. Yep. yep. When you need to optimize the performance, you just comment those. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Increase your credibility. Use thread to sleep. Yes. That's good. Well, my cat is perfect at that. Like he does thread, thread, <laughs> thread sleep multiple times a day. Yes. Just cool. cool. He jumps on my lap. Now, uh, we need to be conscious about the time a bit, uh, but I want to call out the call-up days is, is awesome, um, and it's it's actually being set up uh, in a really nice way, and it's cool to see that it's been, been even easier right. in the future. But um, just a short answer, it's, it's always local events, so call-up days are yep. always about local events, and basically then we do the European collaboration sound for everybody. Yeah, coming to Germany. That's the global side of the things. And then yeah. uh, just not to confuse the things, then we have the Community Days org, uh, which is the Microsoft centralized uh, UX for including collaboration, uh, collab days and all of the other events where people can go and see uh, the, all of the different Microsoft 365 Saturdays, collab days, mm -hmm. all of that stuff from one centralized location. Just to call that one out and not to kind of a combine them or confuse mm -hmm. them, so mm -hmm. hopefully. Now, from a timing perspective, Let's actually start thinking on what's going to happen within the following seven days. Why well, anything interesting uh, or within the past days? Uh, what what are you doing? What you can talk about? Nothing under NDA, so we don't need to cut it. So what I'm doing in the, in the next seven days? Um, yeah. We are we are. I'm basically in the constant exchange with our run events team in uh, in uh, Sarajevo. I mean, our dev team is in Sarajevo in Bosnia. They're great people. I lo love working with them. And because the launch is uh, the first of January. Yep. So you can imagine we, there's a lot of weeks, excluding you, you can, Christmas. You can you can imagine there's a lot of things going on. So my life is at the moment run events, run events, run events, and run events. Yep. Um, plus, of course, I mean uh, collab summit is coming uh, rapidly. If you want, yep. We can brag. A, can we brag a bit? Is it allowed to brag a little bit? A bit, a bit. How many a submissions bit. do you have on this? Yes. We have 700 sessions submitted, which is cool. Insane. For how many slots? 120. That's a lot of 
I know ah, what, what be somebody will be again. doing in the next few, Vesco, di- few days. Vesco, and you know who is the, Vesco, you know who is in the content team, right? I know. <laughs> we, need to call, we need to call out our great content team, which is basically Mustafa, Vesku, uh, Martina Grom, um, Thomas Wachten, and uh, Fitz, Mike Fitzmaurice. Yeah. Those are, those are the brains Feeling behind the darling, uh, huh? behind the content. I think we, I think we have got a great content team. I never again want to change that. That's just the exact five people I want to have on board. Um, and even better, we have crossed the number of thousand tickets recently. What so if you go with this, already? So, so if we go with this pace, we're going to call it sold out in January. So people hurry up. <laughs> That's cool. If, That's if cool. Really How about we put an extra pace. tent? <laughs> Only if you are going to sing in that tent. Are we, are we, is it okay to say how many tickets you can sell or what's the capacity? on? It depends a bit. 2,000-ish. Uh, yeah. Plus, you need to uh, add all the speakers and sponsors to that. Yeah. yeah. But for normal ticket, normal tickets, we uh, it's like two thousand ish that we that are aiming. So there is still room. There is still room. There's still room, but grab it's, their ticket. It's it's Take incredible. It I mean, incredible. You know that you are doing something right, and that moment when you open uh, ticket sales, you sell three hundred yeah. tickets. I think that wow. it is seriously yeah. we are missing that in-person conference, the, the yes. feeling, the the family feeling, what we get yes. one being in one location at the same time. And yeah. I I have to call out Easy ESPC did a great job this week related on that because there yeah. was a mm-hmm. uh, in the event the venue uh, mm-hmm. is really good. Uh, the yeah. the it, I, I'm not surprised they were again on Denmark and Copenhagen because that Bella is it Bella Sky. Bella Sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really great venue. Yeah. So. Really, very cool. And I'm I'm confident that, of course, Dusseldorf will be in the same way because, I, well, I've been there in the past. That was the Omicron thing, but it was still such an awesome feeling to see the people. So even with masks on. So even hopefully we don't have to on. do that. Even, even so. with masks on. Hopefully we never need to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, well, like, what's on your table? Anything what's interesting? What's on my table? Yesterday, yesterday we launched a thing. So that's, did, that's a very did. atypical. Uh, I launched my mic. Yes, a Microsoft did. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, there, yes. Before we do that, bla- blast from 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 the past. This is a picture from 2017. Others? Yes. That's yeah. right. wait, 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 wait. That's need, when I was still at 24. 24. There's another one from me. Oh, that's a little one. one. A little picture. L- before little picture be, before we do you, we, you do you know this guy? Paolo. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's Paolo. Yeah. Some say and... he never ages. <laughs> he looks exactly the same way. Nothing has changed really. Sure. I had you, I had you, I had you. I I'm on the desktop. I'm on the desktop. I'm on the desktop. I saw myself on the desktop. This is Dante. So this is Dante. Yes. I I aged a lot. <laughs> Here I was 12. <laughs> and now you're 32, I, right? I had to ask, ask 22, my, yes. my mom to let me go there. <laughs> and it's so like, 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 we cannot allow you until unless you have a written permit from your mom. So I had to... That's <laughs> like the important thing. The thing that you had, uh, those things that you guys have announced in the in the last days. What yeah, exactly it? right. So, so very, very, very atypical thing of me. Sorry, my my cat is eating my table, which will mean that he will get shot. So let me do that first. Uh, <laughs> no pets were harmed during this call. Um, so, um, very atypical thing of me. Like I am not a PM at Microsoft, and yet I got to launch a product together with a few other folks. So that that that's really like the kick out of it. I can imagine like why people find it addictive, like the uh, um, the adrenaline you get, you know, the, the basically the kick out of shipping something that helps uh, um, um, others is great, right? So together with a few other folks, uh, we've built a tool that lets the developers um, reproduce the very elusive errors, like throttling 500 errors when they get when their apps call wow. graph. On a tenant of one, their apps always work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Issues hit when you run in production on, at scale, but there is no way for you to mimic that. Well, at least until now, right? So we built a tool that is basically a proxy you run on your own box that intercepts the calls to graph. And if you want, it will fail them randomly with 429, 500. And then you can see how does your app act like? And yeah. what we see is that many folks like, I didn't know. Like they always think like, I call an API and it works. So why do I, <laughs> I don't need to worry about anything. Like famous less words, right? Exactly. And now exactly. they can see like these errors are now tangible. So now yeah. they understand like, ha, I need to take into account this, this and that. 
And what is the easiest way to do it? Well, I mean, you can build all of the plumbing by yourself or you can use the SDKs that we offer that have all of that built in already. So yep. we launched that and we're kind of still in the uh, the honeymoon phase, like getting a lot of feedback, applause for that, which is really please, cool. We like, don't quote that feedback because we are going to have, you're going to have to cut out uh, this video so like you did the last time. time it means. Yeah, yeah. So there was, there was one piece of feedback, which was... Um, you might like you might not call it suitable for work, but it it just only showed the passion that people have when yes, they see yes. things that yes. truly address address their needs and problems that they had for a long time, right? So yes. this is just like I think like in a, another kind of applause that basically you know makes me be quiet. It's like and enjoy it, but enjoy. like yeah, like this this is this is really a good thing, and it was a good thing for us to really try because it would start originally as a hack that we've done internally at Microsoft. Okay. But then once we had it and we were able to get it into hands of a few folks, it's here. Yep, there we go. Um, <laughs> Evil eyes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, like the um, feedback that we got was like, okay, we're on something. We need to get it available to everybody. And yep. you might think that that is an easy thing. It's easy to get something out there, but we really wanted to do it in a way that it's not a one person's idea. Like we really wanted to become a thing that we could grow over time and really make it a developer tool for all our devs that's maintained, that's used, supported and all that. And that took a little bit of work, but it's so cool to see that we were able to do that. And we got really support internally as well from the uh, different teams really to get wow. like, yes, like, like we buy wow. in, like we believe in this thing. And that's really a big thing. Yeah, and that's you people have you people uh, have chance to present that at the TSPC. What? Well, yes, we yeah, yes. yeah on the developer keynote we announced yeah. uh, that feature to be available, which is which is a great kind of uh, it's always good to have something to announce, yeah. um, especially when it's something this cool, so yeah. that the whole audience is like, oh my god, that's really really cool. Uh, so really very nice. So. And on my side, next week, uh, we have Airlift, which is an NDA conference, uh, organized Microsoft, uh, a, a, a online conference for NDAs or partners, MVPs and all of that. Mm -hmm. so that's happening next week. I'm, I'm helping on the developer track on that. And then uh, there's so much to catch up on this week. Uh, so even How many if you try, do you, have? I, you don't want to know. So it's just impossible to stay up to date on anything, especially when you want to prioritize the in-person experience to meet the people, celebrate people, maybe visiting even in a few of the sessions and basically show your support for the people. It's just yeah. you don't want to prioritize work emails when you're traveling on a business conference. Yeah, Not as smart. Mm -hmm. So cool. Anyway, thank you, Aris, on this one. Really awesome discussion. Thank you, best. Thank uh, you about that. All the best. Uh, we'll be certainly in touch on touch uh, related on the ECS planning uh, and the sessions. Right. Uh, one thing we forgot, important one. The PMP is officially partnering with Collab Summit. We didn't even mention that. Yes. Yes. So we, the, our Microsoft 365 platform community is partnering uh, together with others on, the, uh, well, with ECS. Uh, so there's going to be a pre-day workshop there. We talked about it with uh, with a lot of the MVP uh, team members and all of that. Everybody is super excited to have the work day, and then we'll do some and, other things. And uh, a few other things. We mentioned this uh, party going all the, all the time. Well, we we will need some entertainers in that party, and we've got PMP. Yes, team. of course. Yeah. So, so that's uh, one I, better we are, thing. That's you know my learning on the dancing. Everything else is still ongoing, so it should be done by. You already uh, know that you are skilled, skilled, uh, or you have the skills to jump from a table. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, do you, can you also jump on it? Because now we know we already seen twice <laughs> you jump off, off it. But there are videos of Pesco and me dancing together, so we can we might even be repeating that. We, we might make make this Is that though tradition. suitable for work? It is. They are. They are. Okay, okay. So it's okay. Somebody, it's someone, okay. somebody, I think, Stefan Bauer even made a giphy out of us. That is true. Of time. That's true. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Some say. And I, <laughs> knowing now that my knees can actually take the jump from one and a half meters or whatever, the, the it was surprisingly high. Uh, it means that the age doesn't actually impact. So it's really good. So we can certainly do some dancing as well. So. You know, there is always <laughs> first time, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking that because Don't I started the it. keynote Don't with a slide it. where we're thanking people standing on the board and then I'm jumping down and I'm like, I'm sure what if goes wrong? If, if, if I now break my ankle, then I'll do the uh, Foo Fighters. Uh, it's okay. No, it's just a flesh wound. Then you do the Dave Crawl thing. You take the to take the chair and you sit there and then you talk from a chair. That's it. That so. happened. Wasn't that was it that uh Foo Fighters concert yeah, yeah, where Dave the, Crawl. Yeah, 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 like they yeah. called it then. 
So he he got the cast on stage and would keep yep. saying like, "Oh, yep. such an artist." I'm yeah. not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna fail on this. I I had that as my backup plan, but luckily nothing happened. So, but you never <laughs> know. So <laughs> it's okay. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Aris, for joining on the on the discussion. You, really cool to catch up, and we'll certainly be in touch. Uh, what's the URL to know more about the ECS? Just to mention that and close on that. Collapsummit.eu. Collapsummit.eu. Excellent. Yes, right. Thank you for that. So, thank you, my thank people, you. and uh, have a great, great, great Christmas time and Christmas holidays. You too. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Aris, for you. Bye. Yeah, all the best. Excellent. Thank you, Aris. One more time on the on the discussion. Really good to catch up as well. Um, and it's it's always a pleasure to have a discussion with you related on community and how things are moving. Uh, any thoughts from your side, Valdek, before we jump on the articles? Um, it's been an interesting talk, right? And we learned a lot about, um, like, on one hand, it was interesting to experience on, uh, from our side, uh, you know, pandemic and the effect it had on communities, attendance, how folks saw the connections. And on the other hand, it's also interesting to learn, like, how does that look like from the point of view of person who organizes the community and events like how what kind of impact it has when yeah. you need to you know scramble last minute and you have venue that you booked and tickets you have sold and how you deal with that yeah. uh, sponsors and all of that at scale of a hundred to thousand plus folks yep it's an it's an interesting thing that you don't always re um realize when you participate or attend events Yep. Not to mention speak, but it's really interesting to hear it from the other side. Like, how does that, how how all of that um, unveiled itself over the course of time? True, true. I mean, it's 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 also good to have a discussion on. It's it's great with event organizers. It's a great reminder on the amount of work, what happens behind of the scenes as well. So, like we chatted throughout the the, the interview, we had the ESPC happening uh, on on the week of the interview as well. Right now, we are actually recording this on week after but it's it's kind of we're combining a few different recordings uh, but it, it was such a well organized thing and stuff just did work but you don't necessarily understand how how much of work that requires that there's no kind of a sudden surprises or anything like that and there's always something but you can deal with that so there's so much coordination so much planning so much work being done behind the scenes without people necessarily even knowing for making those events uh, successful. So thank you for ECS, thank you Aris, thank you uh, ESPC, thank you Kevin, thank you Sarah, thank you a lot of the people in the in multiple of this and, and Microsoft 365 conference organizers as well. So, so many things. Are we gonna get Kat on the room? Yes, yeah, he was just, he timed it perfectly and he just yes. came <laughs> at the door saying like, hey, let me in, I wanna be on the show. So here it yes. is. For those who can see, you can now see my cat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be on your lap. I want to get out. I wanna, oh yeah. I wanna, oh yes. I wanna, <laughs> well, you probably start walk around like the microphone and the keyboard, press some stuff, have, make me join the call or do something weird. He yep. always does that. Yeah. It's good to have an assistant, isn't? It? Oh yeah, yeah. That that's how I scale. Now you know. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, let's let's uh, jump on the uh, weekly articles. So we'll start with a, a what's new in Microsoft Teams uh, so, and, and SharePoint. These are the great summary uh, monthly summary articles. Monthly summary, monthly summary, monthly. Have I said it enough? Monthly summary, 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 monthly yes, these articles. Yes, are monthly summaries. They are. <laughs> uh, on what has happened, what are the new things, what are new capabilities, and kind of showcasing all of the core cool things which are available and which are rolling out all the time. So every single day, uh, depending on a tenant where you are, you'll start getting new features, and some other tenant might get it a few days later, and it kind of rolls out, uh, getting the stuff visible. But having that one, these monthly summaries help on, on understanding what's actually rolling out and what are the things which are available, which is really, really cool. Thank you, Holly Lehman, on that one on the team side, and thank you, Mark Cashman, on the on the SharePoint, OneDrive SharePoint side of things. So really, really cool. A lot of awesome stuff, a lot of awesome features. Uh, OneDrive SharePoint one actually surfaces a lot of Viva stuff and Viva mentions as well. New Viva admin experience in Admin Center. Really, really cool stuff. Oh. So a lot of, I lot of interesting I capabilities. Haven't I haven't seen yeah. that either. So yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Wow, well, like we're learning new stuff. Today, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. We're learning from now. Everybody knows why we're doing this show to stay <laughs> yeah. up to date ourselves. Yes, exactly, exactly. 
That's the whole point of this. Now, we also had a update on the Microsoft 365 level, a bit of a different marketing organization and a bit of different people uh, sharing their latest and the latest admin capabilities which are available in Microsoft 365, calling out a few specific things like the, the shared gaming, uh, which is there for breaks, and you can do a kind of a what is it, engaging uh, with your team more efficiently, even though you're remote. Um, these are actually kind of fun uh, as well. Um, obviously, if you need to do a meeting, do a meeting, then do some gaming, but don't, yeah. So <laughs> or you organize a meeting to game. Ha. Huh. That's exactly. So now I, we have a platform there. Yeah. <laughs> and then the sign language uh, user uh, supportability and all of that, which was actually mentioned uh, previously already in the show with the new articles. It's all ag aggregated to this one monthly summary in Microsoft 365. Now, on the developer side, we did release new version of SharePoint Framework 1.16.1, but we had a problem. So um, as we are recording this one out, I have already updated uh, the blog post and article, just to be clear on this one. 1.16 was good. It was... Uh, to be used, production ready. There's few inconveniences, uh, a really small, uh, let's say, uh, issues. For example, the zip file, the package inside was a bit different than it was in the 1.15.2. So we released the 1.16.1. Unfortunately, however, there was a miss on a server-side dependency. So the 1.16.1 does not yet work until the server-side dependency is actually rolling out. So what we, what we did on Friday is that we, as we're recording this on Monday, we flipped the default whenever you do a latest point back to 1.16. So that will mean that you'll always get the supported uh, functioning production ready version as you do the at latest, and then the 1.16 is there waiting whenever the server side dependencies are rolled out worldwide, will actually point to latest to 1.16.1. So we're kind of dealing with the, with the exception or the, the regression uh, this way. Not, and not an optimal thing, we'll do a proper post-mortem on what happened in this one. Any any ETA? How long it's gonna? Uh, take two weeks, two, two weeks, one week or right. two weeks. Yeah, one and a half weeks, uh, something like that. So uh, I so don't want to say an exact one under the tree. You'll get a 161 under the tree. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I yeah. So it's gonna be a one, a bit more than one week. So most likely. Yeah. So should be good, but. Um, We'll do that flipping automatically so that there's no problems as such. Uh, if you're using 1.16, again, all good. You can still keep on using that. Now, we wanted to call this out because I think transparency uh, is super critical for, uh, well, gaining trust and keeping the trust of people. Yeah. So. Definitely. Now, you are involved in this one. So, introducing sure. Microsoft Craft Developer Proxy, what a community preview. What is this? We released a thing. Yes, we did. So one of the things when you build applications that use the Microsoft Graph or even any other API, right, is that when you build them on a tenant of one, they never fail. It always works, right? Because like there is no load. You press F5, you call the API, you always get a response. And then you put the, the app in production. And that is when things get tricky because of the load, because of the scale. Because at that point, you cannot say, what will be the usage pattern of that app in production across the org that might have thousands of employees across the world, right? Yep. So, and it's really hard to test these things and, and to see how your code, the code you wrote, will act when it hits that error because you cannot mimic the error. You cannot force graph to return 429, throttled, or 500, or any other errors until now. So that's yep. exactly why we introduced this tool, the graph developer proxy, that it's a tool that allows you to mimic errors that you would get from the Microsoft Graph, right? So you run your code, basically the same code as you would run it, but between your app and Microsoft Graph, you will put this tool. And this tool is going to intercept any calls you do to Microsoft Graph. And based on how you set the proxy up, it's going to return with 429 errors, 500 errors, any other kind of errors you want to test, basically allowing you to see how your app will work like in production and then catch these errors and basically build build resilient apps. And with that also uh, <laughs> offer better user experience to customers who are going to use your app in production. Yeah, this is really, really cool. So I had the pleasure of, of sharing uh, I was spilling the beans in the ESPC developer keynote with this one. There's a lot of excitement in the room. You could you could clearly see people being super, super happy and, and understanding the value of this one. So super, super cool, awesome stuff. And it, it is really, really easy to use as well. So super, super cool stuff. 
Excellent. Now, we also had an update on the principles for monetizing selected Microsoft 365 APIs uh, from Microsoft Craft Team. Talks about uh, where this is coming from and the different principles, working principles to guide for the API points uh, and what's going to happen in the future in these areas as well. So, a good summary on, on setting up the scenes and explaining how the high capability APIs or a large set of data APIs which are adjusting huge amount, potentially huge amount of data uh, might actually be monetized in the future as well. So that's kind of the, the thinking point here. So sharing thoughts behind the scenes. Now we also had an update from Isaac Vargas Chacon. Exactly. We have um, released and announced uh, Microsoft Graph Python SDK, right? So there is a preview version available that if you want to use Python, as the language to build apps that, that connect to Microsoft Graph, now you have an SDK, meaning again, you can build um, resilient apps more easily, right? So again, the SDK takes away all of, all of the burden for you to um, do auth, handle errors, all of that is already built in, allowing you really to focus on building apps. And, and in Python, the cool thing is, is that that is a language of choice for um, folks who work with the data, so, right? So the language comes with a lot of packages for visualizing data, data analysis and all of that. And the cool thing is with this uh, SDK, you can now bring Microsoft Graph into the fold really easily. Yep, really, really cool stuff. Uh, thank you, Isaac, on that one. Then we had a, a customer story around Rabobank. Uh, with three months complex process for three weeks to three minutes using Microsoft Power Platform. So using the Power Platform to really give value back and return of an investment. Uh, uh, so, and that's typically why we like buy stuff like Power Platform or, or move to Microsoft 365, we benefit out of it somehow. Uh, but this is a great customer story on, on how they were able to reduce the amount of work needed for a specific reusable workshop uh, work, uh, flows. Uh, from three, what was it? It was three, three weeks to three minutes. That's actually pretty it significant is, time saving. That's pretty cool. So, really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Taiki Yoshihida, on that one. So here we go. And then we had an update from Hugo related on Power Platform Community Front Door. Exactly, right? So, this is the place where you land for all things Power Platform community, right? Whether you want to learn, ask questions, seek out help, learn about events, you name it, right? So there is new experience that streamlines how you access the info, how it's surfaced, all geared towards the point so that you can find the info that you need more easily. Yeah, and Hugo has a nice summary related on all of the different features in there, so super cool stuff. Now, there was a new release of CLI. You want to talk about this one? It's the definitely, big 6.0 so, version. Yes, exactly. Well, it's big in a way that yes and no, right? So every year we take some time to align CLI as we go because as we add new features, we not always manage to do equally well, uh, good job to ensure that everything's aligned across surface because by now CLI is pretty big. Also, yep. we learn a lot. Every single time we add something, get feedback, we learn new things, we get new insights. And then basically once a year, we take the hit and we say, okay, now we're going to improve it so that it's more easier to use across the, the board. But it also mean, means few things might break, right? Yep. So that is exactly why we have a, a V6. It, it allows us to evolve from, from the version in the past to uh, new learnings and insights. And along with that, we ship tons of new features and improvements, enhancements, basically all geared towards the point to help you get more out of CLI and work with it more easily and more effectively. So yep. if you use CLI, check it out. If you don't, check it out too, because you might find in it a great tool. Yep, absolutely. There's a lot of lot of great automation in there. Related on open source uh, projects and, and releases, there was a big H2O React update. 1.6 uh, is now out with a lot of new features. H2O React is the React control solution or project for H2O, which is basically Fluent, Microsoft Fluent UX 
uh, styling and all of that in a reusable package. So the tr it is a fully open source community created uh, adaption of the Fluent UI and aligned completely in the Fluent UI as well. Really cool. Awesome stuff. Uh, related, well, kind of related. Same people behind of the scenes. Stefan Bauer had a new blog post. Exactly. So apparently, there is the new caller of the year 2023. It's Viva Magenta, Magenta, number 181750. And now, yep. apparently, there is a SharePoint theme for you to be able to use the caller of the year in SharePoint sites. Yep. That's really, really cool as well. So, not that that color looks that pretty but well, you know the, so. the the dark theme based on the yeah, color right sure, so there are sure. different ways to go about it there's the light there's the dark fancy and whatnot so there are different ways to go about it but if yep. that's if if the color is important to you now you have a great place to start to use the color in your themes yep really really cool Thank you, Stefan, on that one. Uh, Mark Danderson had a new blog post around find all stream classic web parts during migration to stream in SharePoint. So basically, find all of the web parts inside of your SharePoint uh, deployment, which are classic stream web parts pointing to classic stream videos, which you need to take into account as you're moving to the new stream in SharePoint. So why would you need to take them into account? Well, you want to understand what are the UX which is getting impacted as you're moving from the old stream to the new stream. So super important thing as well. And what basically he is providing here is a is a, a PowerShell, uh, which is then looping in all of the site pages inside of a specific list, a specific site, and then checking if there is a web part which is matching to that particular web part. Um, and then you know that, okay, there's an impacted page. So good stuff. Now, Chris O'Brien had an update related on Microsoft Syntax. Exactly. So as we release more info on Syntax, new announcements, feature summaries, Chris does an excellent job and he's been on this topic for a long time already, trying to, you know, unravel or unpack our announcements, show them in, in practice. And in this article, he does summary of the different articles that were released across different blogs and channels, basically for everybody else to have a one place to go to to learn more. And these are, I believe, all coming from us at Microsoft, right? So he has his own short URL for all of them to basically have that easy reference. But these are all articles. Are they? No, no, they're, they're Chris's articles. They're actually his, yeah. his own too. So it depends really, but still like have a one place to which you can go basically a reference page. And from there, you can learn more about, about syntax, what it is and what it's for and what's the best ways to use it. And <laughs> all emotional. Yes. <laughs> so so good. It's so good. Chris is so good. I can't handle it. So it's yeah. okay. I can't breathe. <laughs> so uh, here's an article uh, from a Power Apps community blog from a Shannon around having a native SharePoint document library experience inside of the database. And this is using its DCF. What is it? DCF? Come on. DCF. Component. ECF, PCF, there we go, PCF components, uh, brain is have a hiccup because I was coughing, uh, PCF components uh, to then get your uh, existing SharePoint uh, document library surface directly into Power Apps or in the in this case, so which is actually really, really cool as well. It, it's a, well, it's absolutely doable. Is that something what you should be doing or not doing? If it matches your requirements, uh, maybe that's something what you want to do. So. Makes sense. Now let's go to the weekly videos. We had a video from uh, Giuliano De Luca on how to collect feedback after webinar is over with Microsoft Teams with Power Automate and Forms. That's a, that's a pretty typical setup actually. So it seems like a great Absolutely. video. As Teams evolves, right? And as more and more folks want to use it for a webinar, well, afterwards you probably want to also know feedback like yep. is there anything we can improve what could we done better different and so forth and so on right so this is one ways in which you could orchestrate that yep absolutely really very really cool stuff thank you Giuliano on that one we also had a new video from Paolo Pialorsi in the PSO stick bytes on the round ship on framework 1.16 and Microsoft Graph SDK 3 which exactly yep 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 
<laughs> okay, I win. Yes, exactly. So starting from SharePoint Framework version 116, you can use Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK v3. Why is that important? Well, the yeah. Graph JavaScript SDK v3 is powerful for one. So it, it allows you to do powerful things like large file upload, batching, and all of that. It also has implemented in it middleware. Middleware being something that sits in the request and response pipeline doing advanced stuff. Like for example, when you get a 429, right? Like your app issued too many requests, your app will automatically wait. You don't need to write any code for that to handle these errors. The SDK does that for you already. So it's really important for you to take that into account. And again, it ties all back into everything that we said about the proxy, you know, that now it brings those error, errors in front so that you can experience them by yourself. And then you will see like, hey, if I switch to the SDK, it's already fixed. I don't need to yep. do anything. How cool is yep. that? That's really, really cool. Absolutely. So cool stuff. And then we had a video from uh, Shane Young around Power Apps random number generator with no duplicates. Uh, seems like a trivial thing, right, uh, for developers, but... Until you try to implement it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, in Power Apps, so right? So in, in Power Apps, the, the Power Apps is still a bit of a... It's missing certain functions, uh, and I'm pretty sure that we'll have a more randomized number generator uh, in the natively supported. For now, it is pretty complex, actually, to do that. And, and Shane walks through how you could be able to do that in, in practice. So basically having this kind of a scenario of bingo uh, machine, uh, so making sure that you don't actually randomize on the same number which has already been set. So, cool stuff as well. Thank you, Shane, on that. Cool. We already went through what's happening this week and next week. Anything else on your mind? Ah, totally. <laughs> so, tomorrow, tomorrow, so as we're releasing, as you're watching, it might have been today, You, it might have already have been. Uh, I'm going to demo on the Microsoft 365 community call, or is it the platform? Platform call? <laughs> platform. Pla platform. Platform call. There, there you go. I'm going to show the One Productivity Hub built on SPFX. And the cool thing about it is, it's really, I think, top of mind, seven lines of code only. And it works in SharePoint, Teams, Outlook, and Office.com. If you're interested in that, you should definitely attend and watch it. If you're not interested, well, well, you should be interested because it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and it's then, automatically hosted, single sign-on, taken care of. Exactly. Everything is just like, like magically. The you get with literally zero code for auth. Yeah, across all these different hubs, again, across SharePoint, Teams, Outlook, and Office, like no auth. It yep. just works. Like you get SSO. It's really, really cool to see in practice. So you can see us uh, demo it on the platform call on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, for those who get to attend that uh, at the airlift, I'm going to co-present together with uh, Seb and a few other folks on the future of graph SDKs. And among other cool. things, we will show the graph developer proxy. So if you have registered, be sure to drop that. Session is on Thursday, 5 p.m. Amsterdam time. Yeah. And by the way, the developer proxy is being presented by SEP also on the same call as you'll be presenting the, the Productivity Hub. So Seriously, I didn't. Well, there you go. We're doing this call so that we can learn. I yes. didn't know about it even. There no, actually, no, sorry. It's week from now. Sorry, my bad, there my you... bad, my bad. 13th of <laughs> uh, December. Go. So and here I said like, I missed something. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That is fair. It's week from now as we're recording this on Tuesday, 13th of December, depending on when you're watching or listening this. Anyway. Have a look on the recording on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Twitter tweets. Uh, tweet, Twitter, tweet, Twitter, whatever. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter account, tweets. Twitter. Use hashtag BMP weekly in uh, Twitter so we know all of the good stuff that you're writing, um, just letting us know on, on what's happening. But thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Please keep the feedback coming. Thank you. See you next week.